Lockheed Martin's F-22 Raptor is widely seen as the most dominant air superiority fighter in the world, but it's limited by its dated avionics. The F-35 Joint Strike Fighter has the most advanced avionics on the planet, but it lacks the hot rod performance of the Raptor. In 2018, Lockheed pitched a new hybrid fighter that would combine the strengths of both platforms into the most capable and dominant jet this world had ever seen. Let's talk about just how good this fighter could have been and why it never got made. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. So I've got to start another week with an apology because you may have noticed that last week's video got taken down. In my video, I was discussing the widespread myth that Germany invented stealth in World War II with the Horton Ho 229. And in the video, I identified a documentary that aired on the National Geographic channel called Hitler's Stealth Fighter as one of the most egregious and sensational things to help spread this myth. Well, fittingly, it turns out that documentary was made by a company called Myth Merchant Films, and despite my use of clips from their commercial clearly falling within the confines of fair use, they gave me my first copyright strike anyway. I guess they just really don't like being called out for their sensationalism. But let's get past it and just get down to business. The concept of an F-22, F-35 hybrid fighter was initially pitched to Japan in 2018 as a new jet that could help counter emerging threats posed by both China and Russia. But to be clear right up front, it was a losing financial proposition. As incredibly capable as this fighter would have been, it also would have been immensely expensive. With more than a quarter century now gone by since the F-22 first started flying, it just made more sense to invest all that money into an entirely new platform. And that's exactly what the US and Japan are currently doing. But the truth is, if it had made financial sense to field this hybrid fighter, it probably would have been the most capable fighter ever to take to the skies, at least until new 6th gen fighters emerged to claim the crown. America's F-22 Raptor is widely seen as the most capable air superiority fighter in history, but its dated avionics, expensive maintenance, and abbreviated production run all conspired to doom this platform to an early demise. With just 186 Raptors delivered before production facilities and supply chains were really cannibalized in favor of F-35 production, America's Raptors are an endangered species that the Air Force now expects to begin phasing out of service as soon as the early 2030s. The F-35, on the other hand, may lack the Raptor's hot rod performance, but what it lacks in horsepower, it makes up for in the most advanced data-fusing suite of avionics ever fielded in a tactical aircraft. And while the capabilities offered by the F-35's computer power may not seem as sexy on paper, the advantages they provide are so pronounced that they're actively reshaping how nations approach air warfare. And the combination of these two already legendary platforms into a single hybrid fighter really could have resulted in one jet that was greater than the sum of its parts. But you guys know me, I'm not just here to write fighter fan fiction, I'm also here to provide you with some context to better understand the circumstances that led to this proposal and why it didn't come to be. As we already discussed, F-22 production was cancelled less than a third of the way through its initial order back in 2011. At the time, some 20 years since the fall of the Soviet Union and with the US embroiled in counter-terror operations in multiple theaters, American lawmakers just didn't see the value in funding all 750 Raptors originally ordered. As a result of that limited production run, America's Raptors cannot be replaced as they age out of service or if they get shot down by enemy contact, and that ultimately means it's destined for an early demise. Older fighters like the F-15 and F-16 don't have this problem because despite their age, they're still in active production. In February of 2017, the Air Force submitted a congressionally mandated study into the idea of restarting F-22 production. It concluded that getting the line running again and building 194 new jets would cost the government around $50 billion. That's $61 billion today. 
All told, each new F-22 would cost around $216 million in 2016 dollars, or $265 million today. If the production order was smaller than 94, say 75, as one separate RAND report indicated, then the cost would balloon to $266 million per fighter, or $326 million today. Compare that to the per unit price of the similarly airstrip reliant F-35A, which today sits at around 77.8 million. New Raptors suddenly don't look quite as promising. I mean, the F-22 is an incredible jet, but is one Raptor really better than three F-35s? America's long-standing ally, Japan, signed on to start buying F-35s all the way back in 2011. But with Russia's Su-57 and China's J-20 both operating nearby, the nation began looking for new air superiority fighters to replace its aging fleet of F-15Js. And that's where Lockheed Martin stepped in. According to Lockheed's proposal, they could provide the nation with a hybrid fighter that combined the sensor-fusing power of the F-35 with the dogfighting chops of the F-22 for just $177 million per aircraft, around $208 million today. And while the U.S. would have to sign off on this deal, it would have real benefits for Uncle Sam, too. Kickstarting production of this new fighter for Japan would allow the U.S. to procure new hybrid fighters to supplement its anemic Raptor fleet, rather than investing in older air superiority jets like the F-15EX. And while this sounded like a great idea at the time, we're still talking about aircraft that started flying in 1997 and 2006, respectively. By 2018, when this concept was proposed, advancements in stealth, sensor technology, material sciences, and elsewhere all meant a hybrid fighter would be pretty dated by the time it started reaching American or Japanese runways. With all the costs associated with standing up a new fighter production line in mind, it just made more sense to begin clean sheet development on a newer and even more advanced fighter that would ultimately cost about the same per airframe. But for the sake of a bit of fun, let's pretend that it somehow made financial sense to field a joint strike Raptor. Let's talk about what that might look like. Now, it's important to remember that this concept never made it out of the proposal stage, which means outlining how an F-22, F-35 hybrid might look, fly, and fight will require a little bit of creative license. To that end, we'll approach this concept by combining the right elements of each fighter, as outlined by Lockheed Martin's statements and publicly disclosed systems found in each respective platform. What that really amounts to is taking the F-22 as it is today, complete with dynamic dynamic aerobatic performance and the smallest radar cross-section of any fighter in history, and adding the F-35's advanced avionics and other elements meant to reduce operating costs or increase capability. We'll work from the outside in. As I said, this new aircraft would leverage the overall design layout of the Raptor, and indeed it would look a great deal like the F-22's that are already in service. As such, our Joint Strike Raptor would also leverage the same Pratt & Whitney F-119 PW-100 afterburning turbofan engines found in the current F-22. These engines produce a whopping 70,000 pounds of combined thrust under afterburner, and would likely deliver similar performance to today's Raptors, with a top speed in the neighborhood of Mach 2.25 and a thrust-to-weight ratio of right around 1.25 with a combat load and a half a tank of gas. This combination of airframe design and power production would give our new hybrid fighter the same super cruise capabilities offered by today's Raptors, meaning the aircraft could sustain supersonic speeds without the use of its afterburner, conserving precious fuel for the fight and for the flight home. The thrust vector control offered by this design and engine pairing provides not only excellent aerobatic performance in a close quarters fight, but probably more importantly, an effective means of controlling the aircraft while engaging at high angles of attack. Despite the outward appearance of the F-22, our hybrid fighter would leverage advancements incorporated in the radar absorbent skin of the F-35. Radar absorbent materials are really essential for maintaining the stealth profile of a stealth fighter, with modern materials rated to absorb upwards of 70 to 80 percent of inbound electromagnetic energy, or radar waves. But RAM is also a huge headache. It's really susceptible to damage caused by things like heat, friction, and just exposure to the elements. 
Maintaining, repairing, or replacing these materials really represents a huge chunk of the maintenance costs associated with the Raptor or the F-35, to be honest. But the F-35 offers a generational leap in the resiliency of these materials, and our new jet would incorporate that to bring down the operating costs per flight hour. Today, the F-22 rings in at something like $85,000 per hour to operate, whereas the F-35A rings in at just around $33,600. Now this difference can be attributed to a bunch of design differences between these aircraft, but more resilient and maintainable RAM is among them. As a result, our aircraft would probably fall somewhere in between these two in terms of operating costs, and be cheaper than the F-22 to fly overall. Today's Raptor really is held back by its dated avionics, and by incorporating the advanced, modular, and still broadly classified capabilities of the F-35 into an F-22 airframe, the result would be a very dangerous jet. The three most prominent operational shortcomings of the Raptor's current avionics include a lack of infrared search and track capability, the inability to target aircraft off boresight, and the platform's inability to directly network with its more modern counterpart, the F-35. Our new hybrid F-22 F-35 would solve all these issues and then some, adding significant new offensive and defensive capabilities, some of which remain undisclosed. Let's start with infrared search and track, or IRST capabilities, because they're really essential for engaging modern stealth fighters in air-to-air -air combat. IRST is, in effect, just infrared or thermographic cameras that can spot and identify the heat signatures produced by enemy fighters, even ones that are too stealthy to spot on radar. Advanced IRST systems like the Pirate and the Eurofighter Typhoon can spot subsonic fighters from more than 50 miles away when facing away from them, and more than 30 miles when approaching head-on. The F-22 does carry the ANAAR-56 Advanced Missile Launch Detector, which does offer a limited IRST-like capability, but our new hybrid fighter would boast the far more advanced ANAAQ-37 Distributed Aperture System sourced from the F-35. I go more in-depth into the benefits of all these systems in the full write-up on Sandbox News, but suffice to say that this distributed aperture system is made up of six infrared sensing cameras positioned around the airframe to provide full 360-degree coverage. These sensors are attuned to both middle wavelength infrared for long-range detection and long wavelength infrared for detection through fog or smoke, and when combined with the helmet-mounted display allows pilots to look through their aircraft at targets, inbound missiles, or enemy fighters. And while we're talking about helmet-mounted displays, let's talk about the electro-optical targeting system we'd stick in our hybrid fighter. Today's Raptor is incredibly maneuverable, but to some extent, it has to be because of the constraints of its targeting systems. Because of the cramped quarters in the Raptor cockpit, the F-22 has yet to feel the helmet-mounted electro-optical targeting system, and as a result, the Raptor can't leverage advanced air-to-air -air weapons like the AIM-9X to their fullest extent. A different cockpit canopy that allows for a larger helmet would be an essential part of our hybrid fighter design to carry this capability over from the F-35. So while today's Raptors have to orient the nose of the aircraft toward a target to lock on and fire, our hybrid fighter's weapons and sensors would follow the pilot's line of sight, allowing the pilot to engage targets off bore sight, or in other words, when they're not directly in front of the jet. The ANAAQ-40 electro-optical targeting system our hybrid fighter would carry over from the F-35 couples with that distributed aperture system we were talking about to let pilots not only see targets to the side of their aircraft or behind them, but even to engage them directly with advanced weapons like the AIM-9X. The Block II AIM-9X currently in production has high off-bore sight targeting capabilities, which means you can use it to even hit fighters flying behind you. Our new hybrid jet would have this capability, just like the F-35 does today. Now let's talk radar. 
The F-35's ANAPG-81 active electronically scanned array radar is the direct descendant of the ANAPG-77 found in today's Raptors, though more modern F-22s came with the APG-77V1 system that likely offers pretty comparable target acquisition performance, it might even be a bit better in some specific scenarios. But our new fighter would leverage the F-35's radar suite nonetheless, thanks to its integration with the rest of the avionics and its superior electronic warfare capabilities. The F-35's radar can work in concert with the aircraft's ANASQ-239 electronic warfare system to identify enemy radars and broadcast a frequency-specific signal directly at it, allowing the fighter to jam enemy radar with its own, and all while still using the system for target detection. Now, the breadth of the F-35's electronic and even cyber warfare capabilities are still largely hidden behind the classified veil, but they very evidently extend well beyond mere jamming. One distinct possibility is the ability to leverage the F-35's radar not just to jam enemy air defense systems, but to transmit algorithms via data stream that can actually infect those enemy systems with malware, like Suter 5, which was developed specifically for electronic attack applications via the electromagnetic spectrum. This could allow the F-35 to monitor the signals that that enemy array is receiving, disrupt its function completely, or even display decoy radar radar returns. With the F-35's advanced avionics and improved radar absorbent skin, and the F-22's high-performing but low-observable airframe, our hybrid Joint Strike Raptor would be a jet without peer. With the Raptor's radar cross-section of an estimated 0.0001 square meters, our aircraft would have a radar return more than a thousand times smaller than Russia's Su-57, all while still providing all of the intelligence gathering, sensor fusing, and battle space managing capabilities that have the Air Force so frequently touting the F-35 as a quarterback in the sky, and all in an airframe that can supercruise, exceed Mach 2, and even do crazy stuff like this. But as capable as this jet could have been, it probably wouldn't have been the most capable jet the US or Japan could field for the money. The F-22's aerobatic performance, some might argue, is a relic of a bygone era of air combat, hearkening back to a time when engagements weren't decided from well beyond visual range. There's no denying that with modern technology, it's possible to field an even stealthier platform. There's also no denying that the US and Japan are looking for fighters that can offer larger payloads and a big increase in range, all with an eye toward the sprawling expanses of the Pacific. So the truth is, an F-35 F-22 hybrid fighter might be an incredible jet, but it's really not the right jet for the types of conflicts that these two nations are working to deter. The sixth generation fighters in active development today probably won't have the same aerobatic performance that we could get out of our hybrid Joint Strike Raptor, but they'll almost certainly outpace even our hypothetical jet in every other conceivable way. And when you think about it, that's even more exciting. As much as we'd love to see more Raptors roll off the assembly line, when you realize that they didn't build them because they could make something better, you can't help but get excited about what's to come. And with that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.